Hi, my name is Daniel Blackburn. Today I'm going to talk to you about ocean phosphorus and phosphorus and water extracts from soil and how to measure bioavailability of phosphorus to plants. All right, so this is the second practical uh, regarding phosphorus in soils from the course SWAE 4401, Water and Nutrient Cycling and Soil Plant Environment. Last practical, we showed you how to measure phosphorus in aqueous solution. You will need that practical to be able to perform this one. So now we're gonna explain the ocean extract and the water extract uh, and, how, and how to measure phosphorus is explained on the previous video. So if you still have not seen it, please uh, uh, watch it. Uh, so in short, we are gonna use a spectrophotometer. Eh? We're gonna use a spectrophotometer like the one here on the photo. Uh, and this, uh, this is a plate reader uh, spectrophotometer. And uh, here on the left is just a computer that controls the plate reader. The plate reader, what it does is shoots the light from a spe with a specific wavelength through the samples on a microplate like the one here on the top and will measure how much of this light goes through and how much is absorbed on the sample. So what we have to measure phosphorus is we, we have a chemical reaction with, uh, with a molybdenum. We, we form a phosphorus molybdate uh, complex called the Keegan structure. And we stain this Keegan structure uh, for a blue color. How do we stain it? It's just by adding a reducing agent on this, on this sample. Uh, the full explanation, as I said, is on the other video. Please watch that if you want to know how to calculate, um, uh, how to measure phosphorus in aqueous solutions using molybloom method. Uh, all right, so uh, I'm gonna play here uh, some videos on the lab. This is the same protocol that I explained last time. Uh, just we have to prepare four solutions. Yeah, sulfuric acid, ammonium molybdate, potassium antimonium tartrate, and ascorbic acid. And these four solutions are for the color development uh, reagent. But also this time we need to prepare the extractant. Yeah, the ocean extractant will be sodium bicarbonate at pH um, eight point five. So here is the when we were preparing this sodium bicarbonate at pH 8.5, just adjusting the pH of this uh, solution before we we use it. Okay. Um, then what we need now is just to weigh the soils. Weigh the soils. We need to weigh. We have two soils here in this situation. Uh, uh, soil one and soil two. We weigh one gram twice, yeah, one gram twice, and this uh, one gram will be one of the the, the, the extracts will be ocean extract. The second one will be a water extract, and uh, I will show you exactly how to do it. So it's measuring here one gram of soil, and then this one gram of soil is transferred through a 50 ml conic tube, a falcon tube, uh, usually known as falcon tube. All right, so now uh, Lilua here is adding 20 ml of the ocean extractant to the soil or four ml of water to the, the ones we extract uh, water soluble phosphorus, yeah, water soluble phosphorus. And then after that, we're gonna shake it for half an hour. This is the shaker in the lab at room temperature. If you have an incubator, you can uh, best shake this on the incubator at one, uh, 100 RPMs uh, per um, RPMs. And after we finish shaking, we will need now to filter. Yeah? We need to filter this and collect the filtrate. So we shake the soil with an extractant or water, and then we are going to filter and collect the filtrate. What goes through the filter is what we're gonna measure. The, the filtrate is the solution that we're going to need for quantifying phosphorus. 
The only thing is when we do the ozone extract, we need to add a little bit of acid to that uh, filtrate just to be able to neutralize this filtrate a little bit and do not have any, any interference on the color development using the molly blue method. So here me, uh, Lilua is adding 100 microliters of sulfuric acid just to neutralize the ozone uh, extracts from soil. Um, so after that, we do what we did last time, just have a mixed reagent, which is uh, uh, corresponding the 10 ml of sulfuric acid, 3 ml of the ammonium molybdate, 1 ml of the potassium antimony tartrate, and 6 ml of the ascorbic acid. Huh? This is Lilo preparing here, this uh, mixed reagent for, um, for uh, adding that to the sample. Once we have the mixed reagent, we have our extracts. Now we have to just to proceed and measure it on the, on the microplate, the plate reader. So next step is we add the standards to the microplate. Same thing we did last time. We add the standards from zero to one ppm on the microplate. Yeah? Uh, um, after we do this, we then add our samples to the microplate. So we yeah, add our samples to the microplate. Here are uh, also pipetting the samples, water extract one, water extract two, ocean extract one, ocean extract two. Um, and the, 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 the curve is on the first column. Yeah? The first is on the first column here from zero, which is just water, up to one ppm. The first two columns are uh, the curve, yeah. So everything we do on the microplate, we do it in duplicate, just to make sure that the readings are correct. Uh, it, it's just the same sample. You do it twice, since we have so much, so many wells on the microplate. It's always worth doing everything in duplicate, yeah. Uh, so after we do that, we need to add the mixed reagent to develop color in the sample. So the mixed reagent is the one that we prepared before with the solutions A, B, C, and D. Yeah, we prepared that before because we just to be ready to do this pipetting on the micro, microplate. But now that mixed reagent, we add uh, 40 microliters to all the standards or all in all the samples at the same time. Yeah? You add to the standards and you add to the samples at the same time. So the reason that you do that at the same time is because the, the scholar development is, um, is a time-dependent uh, reaction. It means that if you wait too long, it will develop more color. If you wait just uh, not enough time, it will develop less color. So you have to wait between 15 and 45 minutes. And when you approach one hour, you start having error because of, because of too much color being developed on the samples. So ideally, you will measure this around 20 minutes, and you have to measure at the same time the standards and your uh, samples. So this is the, uh, the, the, the correct approach to have a microplate or a plate reader, because then you can measure them together at the same time. Uh, OK, so now this is the, 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 the measurement at the plate reader. You can see the, the, the colors. Uh, develops the blue color on the plates, uh, placing the plates in the, in the plate reader. And let's configure the, the equipment. We're going to mark all the, the layout with unknowns. We're going to read the full plate. And we're going to set up the method as we did last time. So we're going to use a photometric method with no shaking or incubation. Uh, choose precision option. Uh, the wavelength 880, if you want to be precise, 882, but it's, it will be the same thing. And just press play. Yeah? Press play. As you press play, the equipment will start reading the plate, the full plate. And that will be very quick. Yeah? And the data will start appearing on the screen um, um, as the equipment reads the plate. Yeah? So, the next thing we're going to do now is uh, show you the calculations now. Last, last video, I show you the calculation of a random water sample. Today, we're going to measure now for the ocean in the water extract. Yeah? 
Once the equipment finishes reading the plate, you can now open this file in Excel and copy the data. Yeah? Copy the data and start working this data on the Excel. First, you have to see your calibration curve, which I explained last time. And then you have to use that calibration curve to measure, to calculate how much phosphorus there is on your samples. So uh, I'm going to show you this calculation now in Excel uh, because uh, from the video it's not uh, so clear as if I do it in Excel for you. Okay, here is the Excel with the calibration curve. If you want to see how to prepare the calibration curve, you go to the previous video. Yeah? The previous video explains the spectrophotometry, the method uh, of Molly Blue and how you use it to, um, to calculate phosphorus in water extracts. So here are the readings that we have, the absorbance for the, the standards from 0 up to 1 ppm. And this is the behavior of the standard, uh, the delta absorbance across the, the peak concentration in ppm. So you use this function, the, the, you, you fit a line to this data and the line must cross in the 0 and you have this value in the function, this value is called the extinction coefficient. The extinction coefficient that you divide your absorbance to get the concentration value. So here I have calculated the delta uh, absorbance, which is just the absorbance that you measured your sample minus the, the absorbance at the zero, which is, has no phosphorus. Uh, and then you, you just subtract one by the other. This is a delta absorbance, yeah, delta absorbance. The next uh, thing you will need for this calculation is the dilution factor. It means that how many mLs of the extractant or the, the, the um, uh, or water do you add per gram of soil? So there's a proportion, there's a proportion of that. So here it's 20 to one and uh, for water it's four to one, okay? So what you're going to do first, you're going to calculate in milligrams per liter. To calculate in milligrams per liter, as we did last time, you're going to just do, you're going to divide the delta absorbance by that number, the extinction coefficient, 0 0.3597, okay, 3597. And this will give you the, the milligrams per liter on the extract, yeah, this is the milligrams per liter on the extract. Um, so let me just write here, uh, here on the top, this is the milligrams per liter on the extract. Now how much there is per kilogram of soil? Now what you need to do per kilogram of soil, you just need to multiply this value times uh, 20, because 20 is the dilution factor, okay? So let's just place the same formulas here and also for the water extract. The water extract will be multiplying, sorry, the water extract will be multiplying the dilution factor of four. So what we have here is, let's just uh, take some of these uh, uh, decimal cases. We have now here that we have ozone phosphorus of 15.5 in soil one, which is below optimum. We want minimum 18 on the soil. 15.5 would mean that we have a little bit of phosphorus deficiency on the soil. Uh, on the, the soil phosphorus lecture, you will see uh, explaining how, uh, how to uh, interpret this analysis uh, uh, from soil and which are the adequate values of phosphorus on the ozone extracts. This other soil has 27. Yeah, we are, uh, like we think about 18 to 25 are adequate levels. Over 25 is already excessive. So because it's excessive, you don't want to apply more fertilizer in soil two, but in soil one, yes, you need more phosphorus fertilizer. And how much fertilizer should you add? Please look at the, the, the lecture explaining the calculations of uh, how to calculate how much fertilizer you should add using um, the ozone key that you obtain from your soil. Now the water phosphorus, uh, it's some authors interpret water phosphorus uh, as a measurement of bioavailability also. You can see that it's a little bit proportional. Soil one 
has um, less water soluble phosphorus than solid two, similar to ocean. But it's really hard to tell bioavailability from water extract. So what what I what I want you to be careful is. Uh, that uh, it's important for you to uh, th this water extract will not be representing bioavailability too much but actually water extract uh, it's, it's a better measurement for how much phosphorus can you lose from the soil uh, through leaching yeah through leaching the highest the water extract phosphorus it means that the easier you will lose phosphorus from the soil on the leachate you will see that not much phosphorus comes in the leachate, only 1 ppm, 3 ppm, whereas you can find for nitrate and other uh, uh, um, ions on the soil, 30, 50, 100 ppm, whereas for phosphorus in the water extract is a low value, it's in the low range, so there's not much phosphorus on the water extract, okay? So here is the calculation as uh, milligrams per liter on the extract, and here is milligrams per kilogram in the soil. You just need to multiply by that value, for that value, the dilution factor that you have. And um, this is the value that you need to use for uh, your fertilizer recommendation and your interpretation of how much phosphorus there is bioavailable for your crops. Okay, I hope that this was helpful and uh, watch out for the handout and the, the, the report. The report you will receive some values of absorbance and you will need to calculate and you will need also to make a fertilizer recommendation based on uh, the previous video and the lecture video also. Okay, thank you very much and uh, I wish, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.